social media has gone through a massive evolution. In the early 2000s, users posted vacation photos, cheesy status messages, and adorable cat gifs on static social media sites. Today, they can still do all that and more, with the bonus of doing so on mobile apps with built-in filters, sophisticated editing tools, and the potential to earn money, lots of it. According to a 2021 report by Instagram analytics company Hopper, soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo, the most followed Instagram personality with 417 million followers as of reporting, can earn more than $1 million per post on the platform. But that doesn't mean that content creators with fewer followers can't earn big bucks. After hitting a certain number of followers or subscribers, views, and sometimes even sponsored posts, they can earn as much as $100,000 per year. More or less, this is already how social media works in the current version of the web. But what if the next phase of the web combines social media, a novel reputation scoring system, and cryptocurrency? What would that be like? This is exactly what David Sancho, senior threat researcher at Trend Micro, tried to find out. We call this possible new version of the web as, as the crypto monetized web, or CMW for short. And what this is, is a, a new concept of the web where every user has attached to them a reputation score. And this reputation score is, a, is in uh, monetary terms, in dollar terms. If they say something that it's valuable to the community, then the reputation score would go up. And if they say something that it's worthless or that it's damaging or, or offensive, then the reputation score would go down. And again, in dollar terms, which means that there's a clear way to assess what the people standing in the community really is. And it also allows for users, uh, social media um, creators, to have uh, um, a way to monetize their own uh, contribution to the community. But before we take a deeper look at what CMW is, let's find out what it isn't. This is very different from Web, Web 3.0. Web 3.0 um, is a lot wider in scope because um, even though it's, it's also uh, talking about blockchain and, and how the web can interact uh, and collaborate, um, and what we're talking about here is completely different. Uh, what we're talking about is uh, about a reputation score attached to a user, um, to every user, right? So it's it's uh, Web three point doesn't talk about reputation, and um, we are we are um, a much narrower scope. So this would be some sort of a subset. Uh, subset of, uh, of a concept for, for Web 3.0. NFTs are a completely different concept too, because NFTs are digital assets that are represented in the, in the blockchain. So you can own those assets and uh, their, their ownership is represented in, in a ledger that uh, it's accessible from everywhere. So you can demonstrate that you own this song or you own this picture. And again, it's a digital asset. So and what we're talking about here is instead uh, that every user has a reputation. So if you consider your own reputation as a digital asset, you can make a case for, yeah, there's some sort of crossover. But in reality, owning a picture and having your own reputation that changes like a stock, depending on what your contribution to, to, the, to the web, it, they're, they're very different concepts, so there's not a lot that you can draw, uh, the comparisons that you can draw to, to, to make them similar because they're good concepts, they're just not related. In the CMW version of the web, users can spend cryptocurrency on creators, causing their reputation values to go up. If a user invests on a content creator and that creator's coin value goes up, then the user's investment also goes up. As David mentioned, think of a creator's online reputation like a tradable good, such as a stock in a company. Of course, in today's web, content creators already have several options for making money. The CMW paradigm is not meant to replace the existing ways of earning money on social media. 
Rather, it's an additional way for both users and content creators to earn money directly on a platform that doesn't need external systems. Let's illustrate how the current web and the CMW version of the web will differ with an example. Eric is a skateboarder from New York. He typically creates skateboarding tutorial videos in English, but he also shares videos of him doing impressive tricks for his followers to watch. One day, Eric wakes up to find his alerts going crazy from thousands of likes and shares of a video he posted just before going to bed. The video has gone viral in Asia overnight, vastly outstripping his normal viewership. He has also started earning from ad revenues on his video and has now garnered more followers from Asia. Let's place the same story in the CMW paradigm. When Eric's video went viral overnight, on top of earning ad revenue and garnering new subscribers, a large percentage of the Asian viewers who watched, liked, and shared his video chose to invest in him because he's a potential rising star in the skateboarding world. This has a direct impact on Eric's coin value. This scenario might soon become a reality as there is already a groundswell of companies interested in going in this direction. Today, a Twitter-like social platform called BitCloud already implements a reputation system that has its own cryptocurrency called Decentralized Social Token, or DSO for short. But like any other technology, it's not all fun and games in the CMW paradigm. Wherever money is made, cyber criminals will soon follow, ready to leverage tried and tested attacks on new ground. If everybody's reputation um, is attached to, to the, to the uh, account, so every account has some sort of reputation in, in monetary terms, in dollar value, then obviously stealing somebody's account uh, would be a lot more valuable. In this new scenario, if my reputation is high and they steal access to my account, then uh, they can make a lot of money from from my reputation so that's uh, obviously uh, a monetary loss from my part if, if they manage to steal my my credentials another one would be for instance a fake content creation if i steal as a, as a thief steals uh, an account that has a high reputation then they can start disseminating content which would be fake content or you know fake news and that loyal audience, because they have invested in that user, they have a high reputation with that user, um, then they'd be listening intently and loyally to, to whatever that user has to say, which means that so that makes for a whole new world in the fake and, and, uh, and fake news uh, kind of attacks, right? So I, I think that uh, there's a lot of uh, possibilities for, for attackers in that field. Uh, if I steal somebody's very high reputation, I can uh, start saying nonsense, for instance, you know, like racial slurs from that account. Uh, probably the reputation would go down. And at that point, I'm able to buy and then announce that he's been hacked so that the reputation goes back up so that I make a lot of money off of those uh, swings in value. So pump and dump schemes now in this scenario where reputation uh, is treated as a stock is also a possibility for, for bad people to make money of. In this uh, CMW scenario would be a lot more valuable than they are now because uh, right now stealing emails or stealing Facebook uh, accounts can be useful but stealing in this new scenario, in this new world of the CMW, stealing an account directly has money attached to it. So the moment that uh, there's a data breach and you can guess username and passwords, then the moment that you hit the jackpot and get one of those uh, passwords, you immediately have some money, the re as much money as the reputations, uh, the user's reputation is worth. So. Uh, data breaches would be a lot more valuable in this world. If every user reputation has a monetary value that can be 
uh, change from uh, blockchain, then I can make payments, crypto uh, cryptocurrency payments, in terms of reputation. So that'd be a lot more murky for uh, law enforcement to follow if you're making uh, reputation uh, uh, reputation money payments from here to there. Then uh, that the money trail of uh, criminal activities. It's very, very blurry, very, very quickly. So money laundering uh, can become madness in this uh, kind of environment. So it is, it is a concern. Lastly, some demands also become a possibility because um, right now, if, if they steal some digital asset and they ask for ransom, then you may or may not feel uh, that that paying for uh, fair, paying to get to get it back is worth it, right? And the moment that you have money attached to your reputation, then you're um, you're a lot more invested in your account. So if they steal your account and they threaten to start making racial slurs uh, from that account, uh, and unless you pay some money, some ransom money, you may be more inclined to pay for ransom. So ransom becomes a lot uh, more of a solid possibility in this environment. In this new web, data will live on the blockchain. Right now, we're not sure what kind of data will be stored there. But one thing that's for sure is that these new kinds of data will affect the level of potential risk that cybersecurity professionals should be made aware of. blockchain not only holds the data of the account, but uh, it also holds more data. For instance, uh, a, a, an extreme that I envision would be kind of like the societal score that they practice in China, right? Where if you, for instance, a volunteer in a, in a, uh, in, in a poor people's uh, soup kitchen, right? Then that uh, earns you points, which then may uh, give you, for instance, a better uh, school for your kid, right? Th that kind of system where all the points that you, from the good deeds that you do in society, can be um, used for other things that society, that the government uh, provides. If, if in that extreme, uh, it's implemented in the blockchain, that would mean that uh, in that scenario, that stealing those accounts would be potentially very damaging for the user. So that extreme, I think it's, it's, it's not likely to happen. So I'm not saying that this will happen. I'm just saying that there's a spectrum of uh, things that you can uh, put in the blockchain, right? The more stuff you put in the blockchain, the more concerning the loss of an account would be. And that would be the complete extreme where uh, your society score is completely stored in the blockchain. Before this sci-fi-like future takes place, though, the CMW will likely face several challenges, like taxation complexities, pseudo-gambling concerns that have mental health and financial implications, and even several failed attempts at creating cryptocurrencies by social media companies might be roadblocks to this future. Still, regardless of when the CMW becomes a reality, it's never too soon for cybersecurity professionals to prepare for new and emerging technologies, as well as their corresponding changes in the threat landscape. It is important for cybersecurity to conduct these uh, forward thinking uh, thought experiments, because uh, if we haven't thought about it and the moment comes where this is actually materialized, then we have to start creating an attack surface, create, making uh, predictions of how the bad guys are going to react to this new environment. And uh, if we have that, uh, done that exercise before, then we at least would be prepared to know where the bad guys will be coming. Um, it is not that far-fetched, so it is actually uh, plausible to think that this, this or something like this may be implemented in the future. And uh, in the event that this happens, uh, the uh, threat landscape would change in a way 
that uh, we can more or less predict because at the end of the day what we're saying is not that they're going to do completely different things but the criminals are going to try to follow the path of least resistance right try to uh, do whatever they're doing now successfully and try to accommodate it into this new environment so trying to predict how they're going to act i think it's important